We're talking about interpreting idioms, and my name's Rebecca. Who am I? I'm an American Sign Language teacher, and I'm an interpreter at Sunset International Bible Institute. My education is that I have a bachelor's degree in social work, and I have a Bible degree in Sunset. Bleh. Is it, um, does, does it work to have an interpreter in here? Okay. It's idioms. They're really not interpretable. So it will okay. be a very hard job for an interpreter, but if you're willing. If, if he has a question, he can just ask me. And I'll talk to him later. I mean. It'll, it'll be on here. So if you. If you want to sign, it'll probably be okay because they can see here too. Okay. I may just sit here and just kind of help them out as we go. Okay, so they asked me to be a speaker here. If you notice, I haven't attended an ITP program. I'm not a certified interpreter. I've been hanging out at Deaf Church for eight years, and all I know is just from hanging out at Deaf Church for eight years. Okay, so that's where I am. Who here has been signing for less than 10 years? Has anybody been signing less than five years? Anybody less than two years? Okay, my class is really for that person who has learned some signs and they keep getting stuck in a situation where they're like, interpret this prayer or interpret for the baby shower that we're going to. And so this is for a person who knows a few signs, but is just getting into interpreting. Um, this is just my sign language class. I teach sign language at SIBI. I'm kind of like public relations for the deaf, I feel like. I create an environment of deaf awareness among the students and a love for signing. So it's another picture of my sign class. If people do the sign class for a year, we have an advanced class the second year. I had some online this year, so that's that. Interpreting, LTC, mission work, our student body. All right, so what makes a good interpreter? Somebody who can provide conceptually accurate pictures of what has been said while retaining the intended meaning. So some common interpreter mistakes. These are just things when I teach, you know, I teach vocabulary and I say, get up and try to interpret this. This is just things that my students struggle with. Getting the big picture. Often a new interpreter who um, focuses on signing the individual words so much that they miss the big picture. Interpreters should always focus on giving the client or your member um, the overall concept first, and then fill in the details as they can. So it's important to develop the ability to rate material in order of importance. Okay? I don't know if that sounds terrible to you, but sometimes we're asked to interpret and we're not at the level that we can get every word, so what do you do? I think it's important to be able to take the whole concept and give that and then as you can, as you're able, start adding in details, right? Concept first, detail second. So I have an example of what I'm talking about. If an interpreter were to say, last Christmas on the evening of December 25th, my mom, dad, grandmother, uncle David, sisters, brothers, nephews, and all celebrated my grandmother Mary Ellen Jo Phillips' 102nd birthday. Now, a new interpreter probably can't keep up with all of this. But what can you do? You could say, last Christmas, my family, my family, you know, celebrated my grandmother's birthday. Or if you had a little more time, you could say, last Christmas Eve, my family celebrated my grandmother's 102nd birthday. I think 
hundred and second, that's an important part of information to include. So I would say hundred and second birthday, if I had a little more time, I might say my grandmother Mary. But if I said my grandmother Mary and there was a little more time, I would say my grandmother Mary Phillips. But what I see happen is people say my grandmother Mary, Ellen, Joe, and they're so behind, they drop it and they move on. And so we don't even know that there was a birthday. Does this make sense? So don't worry about every detail if you can't do every detail. Get the general picture. And then when you can, give them more. Appropriate lifetime. Starting to interpret before you have heard the full message and context can lead to misinterpretation of information. Okay? So an example of what I'm saying. Hot from his long walk, Jack entered the house and took a long drink of water. How would you interpret that? I'm just commas are. I'm sending him. <laughs> well, mostly the long drink of water. I probably just say. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. It's okay. I'm putting you on the spot. The thing is, you don't know because you don't even know who Jack is. The rest of the sentence before lying down at his master's feet. <laughs> so this is Jack. Jack's a dog, right? So if you know he was going for did I say a walk? Yeah, a walk and it's hot. He enters the house and just gets a long drink of water and then you realize it's a dog. You know, dogs <laughs> drink water. So you have to wait. If you're in such a hurry trying to keep up, you know, then you might miss something. So, another example. Now, this is this is really complicated. I just I'm sorry if you have to sign this. Upon entering the room, her eyes were immediately drawn to a beautifully ornamented gift atop the dining table. After untying the present's blue satin ribbon, she slowly opened the case. Now, when you get to case, you're kind of stuck. Because what kind of a case, right? Her eyes dropped, um, her jaw dropped, as she stared at the beautiful, shiny, new... You still don't know what they're talking about. The shiny new engagement ring? Because, you know, you would op open an engagement case. Or is it... What do I have? Handmade. A handmade rifle or a guitar, you know, where you open the case? Or is it a pair of glasses or, you know, a camera? A camera where you, you know? So up here, you don't know how to sign it yet until you get here. Does that make sense? So just learning to wait is important. Number three. That would be so hard when you have a deaf person that's looking and going. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. She said it's, it's, did you sign? Go ahead and say. That it's hard when you have a deaf person who's like, what's wrong? Why are you not signing? But you're waiting for the concept. And that happens with voicing also. Maybe someone else is going to be like telling you a word because they think you're stuck or you don't understand, but maybe you're waiting for the full concept. That's just part of it. Double negatives are hard. Word for word interpretations of double negatives should be dropped, in my opinion. <laughs> double negatives should be eliminated. Oh, okay, right. Oh, word for word interpretations of double negatives, okay. Should be eliminated and replaced with more clear and concise phrasing. What am I talking about? Do you guys know this song? Will you not tell it today? Will you not tell it today? If the light of his presence has brightened your way, oh, will you not tell it today? Please, nobody tell anybody about Jesus. Nobody. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's kind of what you're saying. So when I interpret it, I'm just like, tell it today. Tell it today, you know? If he's 
Brighton changed your way? Tell it. So I change it, the double negative, to make it a positive, right? Another example. There's not a friend like the lowly Jesus. No one. That, that sounds like Jesus isn't a friend, you know? No, not one. It sounds like you don't have a friend like Jesus. So I like to say something like, Jesus, he's like the top friend. Or there's no friend equal Jesus. But don't say that we don't have a friend like Jesus. So, sorry, I'm moving quickly because I just know I don't have a lot of time. I hope you guys are trekking with me. So the point is, just try to think about the words and the meaning. And try to give the meaning. Don't worry about word for word. Just what does it mean and tell them that. Diesel trucks need to be filled with gas a lot less often. <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> I'm sorry. Do they need to be filled with gas a lot? Do they need to be filled with gas less? Or do they need it often? Like, which one? <laughs> because when I see that, I hear three different things. They need it a lot, they need it less, or they need it often. I would just say less, you know? The trucks need gas less, or less than other cars, right? So avoiding the double negatives. Roll shifting. There's going to be an entire class on roll shifting, but I'm just going to briefly mention it. Roll shifting provides information about who's speaking, the location of the speaker, and some of the speaker's characteristics. For example, a father talking to a son. So what am I talking about? Dad, I want candy. No, we eat first, finish, you can have candy. Okay, you know? I'm looking up, why? Because the dad's taller, you know? Or looking down. So that's what I mean about providing location and characteristics. Or Paul and Jesus on the road to Damascus, you know? Why are you perse persecuting me? And who are you, Lord? This all right, so repeated pronouns can be dropped. When you're doing the role shifting, you don't have to say, then I said, or he said, or Peter said, Paul said. You don't have to keep adding in the names and the pronouns. You can just role shift, look back and forth, it's enough. Hmm. So this year for LTC, our song was Jesus Paid It All. I probably watched 300 kids sign this song while judging. And what I didn't see is the role shifting. I saw a lot of, you know, I hear my Savior say, your strength, small, child of weakness, watch, pray, find in me, you're all in all. Okay. But there's a lot more you can give because there's a conversation here. So I prefer, I can hear my Savior say, your strength is really small. Child of weakness, watch and pray. Find in me your all in all. Jesus paid it all. You know, and then you're talking to everybody. So you see the difference? How it just kind of fills in the concept and gives you a picture of the conversation. But the mistake I probably see the most often is a word-for-word -word interpretation of English idioms which fail to convey the actual meaning. So today, really, our focus is on interpreting idioms. I'm just checking the time. Okay. What is an idiom? Just an expression that cannot be understood from the meaning of its separate words, but has a separate meaning of its own. You know, it's a meaning that's important to a particular culture and language. That's what all of that says. We're going to skip through that because we know. Okay. So, as interpreters, we need to be able to interpret English idioms into a reasonable ASL. Put good. I'm going to say reasonable. And also, we need to be familiar with the deaf, their own idioms, because we're going to see them, and we're probably going to have to voice interpret for them at some point. 
So we're going to, as much as we can, fit into our time slot, look at some of both. So what do you guys think? Don't lock your keys in the truck or you will be off the creek without a paddle. Good. She said stuck. That's what I thought. Now, on most all of these, there's going to be, you know, 20, 30, 1,000 different options of how you can sign them. You know, it's all what you think of in the moment, and it depends on your experience and how you view it. So, so I can give my opinion, and then you guys will probably have your own ideas, and most of all of them are going to be valid. <clears throat> My nephew wants to borrow my car, but he's barking up the wrong tree. What would you do for barking up the wrong tree? Any idea? He can't have it, but he can't. Asking the wrong person. That's exactly what I thought. So we're, there's an idiom for you. You guys know this one on the same brain wavelength. Asking the wrong person. I know you didn't like the movie because it's written all over your face. I can see it in your expression. I like that. I think I like that better than what I put. <laughs> Any other ideas? I put it's obvious. I can see you didn't like it. It's written all over your face. It's obvious that you didn't like it. When you said the students were too hungry to pay attention, I think you hit the nail on the head. Right. You guys all you all said the same. You're right. I think you're right. What's interesting is sometimes the same idiom can mean different things, like in this sentence. My mom really hit the nail on the head with my Christmas gift this year. Right. That's what I put. She got me the perfect gift. So hit the nail on the head even, you know, could have different meanings. Um, it's interesting. I feel like once you interpret a while, you kind of have like your standard go-to. Like when I hear this phrase, I just know I'm going to interpret this. But then even that can throw you off sometimes. Because it so much just depends on the context. When I came home last night, I saw the mess and I just lost it. Yeah. 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 So, most of you were angered by the mess. I mean, it, it could be that you're angry or it could be that you could just... You know, if it's fun, if it's if it's your toddler spilt flour everywhere, you could be angry or you could think it's funny or maybe both. So. My sister used to tease me about being too short. Well, now the tables have turned and I'm taller. Yeah. Things have, yeah, things have changed. I put what you put. What I mean by this is this sign. I just don't know how to write that in English. Now the tables have turned. Yeah, the situation's flipped. It's always good to set the stage before telling a story. Are you actually going to sign word for word, set the stage, or is there a clearer way? Give details. Okay. Okay. What I thought of. I'm oh, sorry. Oh, uh, yeah, the characters, the roles. Who's involved? Just give the background. Set the stage. You know, you're going to teach about acts, you know, set the stage first, give the background information. But I wouldn't sign word for word set the stage because I don't know that setting up setting up a stage, you know, for performance or what, what is that? Give the background. 
you need to practice signing until you can do it on autopilot. Yes, she said easy. I like that. She said until it becomes natural. I put I put that too. So you can do it on autopilot until it's just natural. If you don't like your job, maybe you should branch out a little. What do you think? Change, change your job. Yeah. Try something new. Right. That's basically, I thought, try different, different things. Try some different things. The concept of fasting is completely foreign to me. Are we talking about a foreign country? Right. Strange. Or maybe new to me. Foreign to me could be new to me. Not something I've experienced. Here's a bunch more. I don't even know if we have. I'll just read through them quickly. It makes up your sleep. A surprise plan, right? Um, stuck or between a rock and a hard place. You're stuck. Bite the hand that feeds you. To take advantage of. Pull yourself up by your own bootstraps. You need to help yourself. Achilles heel. Your hidden weakness. All thumbs. Awkward. All the bells and whistles. My new car has all the bells and whistles. Fancy. Fancy is enough. Beating around the bush. Right? Um, or this. Back to the drawing board. We need to begin planning a game. I have an axe to grind. I have a complaint. The students were all ears paying attention. Air your dirty laundry. <laughs> Telling everybody your private business. Putting it all out there, you know? The black sheep of the family. I don't even know if you can understand my notes, but you know, like the family pulls back from that one because they're kind of, right? The black sheep of the family. Pulling the wool over your eyes. Yeah, I was thinking to see different ways. So some idioms like the ones we just saw, I think they're pretty obvious. You know that they're figures of speech and we probably need to change them. And no one's going to try to really do like, you're barking up the wrong tree. Like, probably not, you know. Some of them, though, I think are a little more sneaky and we're more tempted to sign them that way. They're more subtle, causing us to overlook the fact that they may be confusing or unclear to the deaf. They may be. You know, because some deaf know a lot of English idioms and others don't. So it just depends on your audience. So I picked out a few that to me are more subtle. Ever since I heard about Jan's mother dying, she's been on my heart. How would you sign that? Right. On my heart. For the... I actually thought I've been thinking about her. Just on my heart. Thinking, thinking, thinking about her. Yeah. Just really dwelling, thinking about. Mm -hmm. <coughs> you always think people are jealous of you, but it's all in your head. Yeah, it's not true. It's yeah, wrong. it's not true. It's wrong. I put, you know, it's it's from your imagination. You're imagining that. Yeah, paranoid. There are many ways. Many ways to make that more clear. Good, good ideas. My mother always says that beauty is in the eyes of the beholder. Oh, you could sign that. My mom always says beauty is in the eyes of the person looking. 
you know, uh, is the meaning really there? I don't know. Maybe for some deaf and maybe others would be a little confused. It just depends on them. But I like beauty. It depends on your perspective, right? It's, it's more clear. Oh, I have one. I have so many. Okay. When studying the Bible, it's important to think about the big idea. Right, yeah. General points. Yeah. Sit at the feet of, learn from. The other day, I came across an old photo of you. Now, this isn't an idiom. But I see this kind of thing interpreted by my new students. You know, the other day I came across, and especially if you're trying to hurry to keep up, you know, that's probably where you tend to do this more. An old photo of you, and really, it's just I found it. I found the picture. Okay, we're not going to, I had a recording, but we're going to just move past that. So the deaf community also has their own commonly used idioms. It's important to be familiar with these idioms as you will probably be required to voice for them at some point. So we're going to look at a few. Some idioms are shared by both the hearing and deaf communities, such as in one ear and out the other. <laughs> and we all say that, or I'm gonna draw the line. Or end of story, period. No more, right? Um, key brain, popular in both. Riding the fence by a hair. Oh, that makes me sick. So both both groups use that. My mind is blank or open-minded. So some idioms don't need necessarily to be changed because we all use them and understand them. Other idioms are unique to the deaf world, such as kiss fist, love it, no good, ruined, spoiled, piece of cake, easy, nothing to it, build power, think strong. You know how they use strong, like you look like, you look strong like, yeah, or compulsive liar, strong lie, 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 strong lie. Um, touch, finish you. Have you been to? Have you been to France? Looking France, touch, finish you. Have you been there? For real? For real, yeah. It's up to you. Up to you, think yourself, you decide. Um, nothing to do, or what do you want me to do? Some idioms change the motion of a sign, while others combine signs. So different kinds of deaf idioms. Um, made for each other, or you can, we're incompatible, we're a mismatch. Or communicating, or communication fail, right? It just changes the motion. There are some that combine signs, and they're pretty clever. Like, we, mine, but weak on the mind, weak minded, pupil minded, hearing brain, right? <laughs> hearing and brain combined, hearing brain. A few days ago, a few days ago, um, I learned my lesson or mentally scarred, you know, you're taking this and this or this and you're combining them to, and it becomes a deaf idiom. An all-nighter, right? Wide awake, all night long. Um, in your own little world. So it's kind of like clever ways of combining other signs that we have to give them a new meaning. Other deaf idioms? Or your dirty laundry? Kind of let it all out there. Mm -hmm. This is a one Breakthrough, right? Yeah. Breakthrough. Um, close, close by, right over there. 
eyes pop out of your head. I like this one because it's like a cartoon, like, oh, like, woman, you know? Um, backfire, I don't know. They're different in different areas. I know it just depends on where you're from. I've seen, what do you guys do? Do you have a sign for that? Like, bold in your face? Yeah. Yeah. Pick up a new skill. Barely getting by. And this one, hands off. <laughs> Don't ask me. Kind of thing. Not my problem, right? Are we got? Are we all familiar with most of these? Yeah. So, any questions? I feel like they just blew through that. I don't even know what time it is. I was so worried about not finishing the time. Three and ten minutes. Oh yeah. The train's gone. Sorry. Yeah. That's a good one. I didn't put it because it's so popular. Yeah. Feedback. Practice what you preach. I didn't know that one, so thank you. I like that, right? Preach. How? Practice what you preach. Okay. So does anyone else have one they want to share? Because we have a few minutes still. Any of the deaf have something? Yeah. Mentally scarred. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you guys have seen these DVDs. I like them. Some of their DVDs, not so much, but I think their idiom DVDs are pretty good. And there's five of them, so it, it's like 250 or something different idioms on these DVDs. And they sign them, and they use them in a sentence. So it's just uh, like a really good tool, you know, if you're out in the church and you're just your church interpreter. You can find them online. This isn't actually exactly serious. I think it's life print. It's like what? Life print, I think, that makes these. I can look it up. Just Google it for you. But it's just a good way to build your vocabulary. You know, if you don't have the ability to move off to who knows where and attend an ITV program, something you can do. Has anybody else used these before? <laughs> I have a preacher who's from West Virginia, and he has a lot of really out of your sayings. Yeah. So Wednesday night, he says, it is like searching for a black cat in a dark basement when he's not there. <laughs> so what, how do you sign that? <laughs> That's so funny. I would probably sign it word for word. Because would you do the quote? Because yeah, probably because visually, like you can imagine really what a black cat in a dark basement. Like okay, that's hard to find. So it's it's almost it's still understandable. He does this all the time. <laughs> Okay. Doctor what? Dr. Sign. Dot com. Mm -hmm. No, Doctor. Doctor, it wasn't sign. Doctor. Oh, okay. She said there's a lot on there too that you can look at. Or
silentweekend.com. Okay. Paris. Yeah, there's a magazine or catalog called Paris. The internet is a very good resource for people who are kind of like stuck, you know, like interpreting, but can't be in like a college type situation. The internet's a good way to learn, to teach yourself. That's a lot of what I've done. I've just myself. She's going to share a story. We have three minutes until the bell, so that's perfect. <laughs> okay, so this is a joke. But I heard many years ago, we can't forget. I was driving in the country and I stopped at a train track. I stopped there and the rails were closed because the train was going by and after it had gone past, they were still closed. So I wrote a note to the man and I said, but, but, he said, but, what do you mean? I said, but, and pointed to the rails that were closed. He didn't understand. Said open. What? Open. Read open. Funny. <laughs> 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 All right. So we're done. Thank you guys. Thank you. I hope that was beneficial. I